Ms. Legalista, aka Attorney Sheila here. I want to go back to the Michael Ower case. Remember, he had filed a petition to terminate his conservatorship and for a full accounting of the monies that the Tuies had been responsible for while they were taking care of him and looking out for him and all of that. Well, I got a question from someone who watched, I guess, one of the videos. And the question was, so Attorney Sheila, what are your thoughts now that the Tuies have presented evidence proving that Michael Ower was lying to his legal team when he claimed that he made nothing from the Blindside movie? At least twice in his petition, the family are falsely accused of making millions while he made nothing. Well, let's talk about it. Yeah. First, let's go back in time just a little bit so that I can bring you back up to speed on what this petition said. Now, I'm not going to bring the whole thing back up, but just a few pointers here. The Tuies began their conservatorship of him back in, let's see, 2004 when he was 18 years old. Now, stop for a moment and think about your maturity level, your knowledge level, your understanding of the world when you were 18 or 19 years old. Hmm, most of us, we think we know a whole lot more than we actually actually no. In any case, they had this conservatorship in place. And then last year, August 14th, 2023, he filed this petition demanding a jury trial, wanting to terminate this conservatorship and asking for full accounting. Now remember, he was the one whose life was portrayed in the movie, The Blind Side. And he was basically saying that they, the Tuies, their family had gotten millions of dollars and that he had basically kind of gotten nothing. They filed a response. I have not been able to find that response. I've been looking for that response. That's why I haven't really talked about this because I prefer to have the documents in front of me so I can see exactly what's being said. In this case, I'm going to be focusing more on what I've been able to pull from a lot of different media sources and put together here in my notes. And this is what we're going to talk about now. First of all, because I'm going to have a couple of questions about his attorneys. Like, what were y'all doing when he came to you and said, yeah, they paid me nothing. They paid me nothing. How much actual research did you do? What kind of questions did you ask? I'm a little concerned here about what was going on during those consultations. Let's also not forget that Michael Ower is claiming that the Tuies never filed any annual accountings that were due relating to the managing the conservatorship. That may be the reason why their team, the Ower's team, didn't have any documents. Still, I feel like they went way overboard with some of this. I'm a little concerned. It says here that they paid, here's the amount, $138,311.01. Okay, now, $138,311.01. That's a very precise amount. Somebody had something coming from whoever they had signed with to show exactly how they came up with this number. Like this was not some sort of round number somebody pulled out of the air. It says here that amount was paid to him in multiple checks from June 2007 through April 2023. Now, I did read in one of the media reports that some of these checks maybe weren't processed or cashed. I'm not sure what was up with that, but that he was paid over $138,000. And here's the other thing. They talked about the split. They said the split coming from the proceeds of the movie and the book was going to be 20% each. So Michael would get 20%, the two children of the Tuies would get 20%, and then the Tuie husband and wife would each get 20%. And that would add up to 100% because today I can do math. Here are the questions I am asking myself. So when the client comes in and the client says, hey, I'm being you know, jilted. I'm being scammed. They've taken my money. I don't know where the money is going. I haven't gotten anything. There are a lot of questions that have to be asked. Now, this is not some sort of run of the mill firm because I looked them up. They've been around for a really long time. And actually not too long after this petition was filed, they ran into some of their own issues. And I think there was some sort of split between the law firms and some other law firm then sued the law firm. I don't know. They have sort of a different name now. I'm trying to figure it all out. But what kinds of questions were they actually asking Mr. Ower when he walked into their office and said, hey, I want to file this petition. Filing the petition to end the conservatorship is one thing. Asking for a jury trial and saying that you want a full accounting because some of the accountings were not filed. Well, that's another thing. But then sort of alleging that they never paid you anything 
and that they scored millions while you got, I don't know, pennies or nothing. That's a whole different kind of allegation that you're making. And typically it's going to be incumbent on the attorneys to do the research, ask the right questions, and then look over the paperwork to see if it all makes any sense. I feel like somebody dropped the ball here. If all the other side has to do is to show up and say, well, here are the documents right here. Well, the judge granted the termination of the conservatorship, but there's still some issues that are kind of out there that haven't been resolved. So for one thing, Michael Ower is saying that he never would have signed over his rights regarding his name and likeness and image. Well, 20 years ago, a lot of people weren't really thinking about that like we think about that today. Today, it's very common to talk about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and making sure your contracts specifically say you know, what you're giving away and what you're keeping. It's common practice now. 20 years ago, in some instances, people were still sort of fighting over who would have control of what. I mean, remember, you had a lot of conversations between even colleges ownership of the use of the name, image, and likeness of their student players. So now here it is 20 years later, it's easy to sort of talk about, oh, I never would have given those things away. Well, I'm not so sure because people actually did give them away. They gave them away all the time. So that's the second thing. So throwing in, in there, what were the attorneys thinking? And then there's this whole name image and likeness thing. I don't know. Then there's the third thing, finally, where he says he's not sure if that's his signature on the documents. He, again, doesn't think he would have signed them. It, says it, he, it looks like his signature, but he's not really sure. Well, again, that was back in like 2004, 2005. Who's going to remember every single document that they signed back then? If it looks like your signature, I don't know. I don't know what to say. We'll see what the judge has to say about this. We'll see what kind of evidence the parties walk into the court with. And we'll go back to this person who asked the question. And I'll say, I hope <laughs> that that answers the question. Uh, those are my thoughts on it now. Um, was he, here's one of the things I, I guess you ask, you know, about him lying to his legal team. I don't know if he was intentionally trying to deceive them or if he really truly believes that he didn't sign this and that he didn't get any money. I'm not sure how you go that route. Um, if you've actually been receiving the money, but if the money's just being deposited into your account and you don't see it separately, you might miss that. You might not be really focused on it. So I don't know if he was intentionally lying, but I do think that there is something else going on here in terms of um, him maybe not having someone else to talk to him about his finances. I think he was young at the time. I think maybe he needed to have some other guidance. And this is not saying anything um, about the twoies that they were doing anything wrong. I just think he was young and I don't think he necessarily understood everything that was going on at that time or or maybe paid attention to it. What 19 or 20 year old is really paying attention to contracts and what the contract says. And even if they read the contract, does a 19 or 20 year old understand the contract? All right, that wraps it up. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, hit the notification bell and peace.